Hi, my name is Rubidium. Welcome to our second IntelliTech lighting breakdown. Today we're looking at the 2015 movie Steve Jobs, written by Aaron Sorkin and directed by Danny Boyle. Aaron Sorkin is famous for his walk and talk scenes where two characters do lots of exposition while being tracked by a camera through the environment in which they exist. Danny Boyle worked to put a different spin on this by having Steve Jobs talk with his collaborator while they're preparing for a big keynote speech and then cutting backwards and forwards between the preparations for the speech and the conversation beforehand. This was a really cool way to do it because it allowed them to use practical looking lights as well as all the theatrical lighting um, that comes with talking in a big auditorium. We're going to use two new lights from IntelliTech to mimic this scene. The first is a kit of LC50s, light cloth 50s, and the second is a Light Cannon Pro, a really powerful Fresnel style light. For the first section, we use two LC50s. We have the LC50 um, taped flat to the ceiling here. The great thing about this light is the profile is so thin that we can just gaffer tape it straight to the ceiling and you have absolutely no issue with it at all. This gives us the ability to control the amount of light we're filling with the scene. The LC50 is great for this because it's so low profile. Uh, you can stick it to pretty much anything and it can be almost invisible while giving really high output with bicolor and uh, lots of control and being operated by battery. The second one was what's called a follow fill. For our fill, we have another LC50, this one on a boom pole with the wire going down to our gaffer's belt. Um, and then that, we can, between those two lights, um, we can pretty much light the whole scene. And that acts as sort of a fill on the characters to separate them from the background and give a good level. We did this by carrying the um, LC50 on the end of a boom pole um, attached to the gaffer's belt with the china ball attachment um, to give a nice even fill over the characters as they walked. This meant because the light is moving with the camera and is on the same axis of the camera, it doesn't really create competing shadows with your key light. And so it's more or less invisible except for the level it adds. LC50s, like the ones that come in this three light kit, are a great all-purpose light. They are bicolor, they can be powered by battery or through mains power. Um, they have a variety of different attachments. Um, you can use them just naked as they are. You can use them with the um, china ball attachment. You can use them um, with the grids and the skirts, um, like I'm doing here, in a two-panel arrangement to give it perfect key light for uh, two camera work or interviews. So it really is a Swiss army knife light that you can use a whole bunch of different scenarios and will give you a bunch of different uses um, for the same three lights, all in a kit that's really easy to carry and versatile. The next scene we shot was the theater scene um, that emulates Steve Jobs walking on stage at the auditorium. For this, we use the Light Cannon Pro. This is the similar output to an HMI light, but it's an LED, single chip on board LED. This means that it doesn't get hot. It comes up to temperature almost immediately. There's no globes to change or manage or globes to blow out and have to replace. You get a really hardy, um, resilient light that can plug straight into the wall. The IntelliTech Light Cannon Pro um, Daylight. So this is a single color temperature chip on board LED um, that plugs into the wall and uh, because it's uh, you know we're getting, having it so up high we're actually using the um, re remote control it comes with to be able to um, I've got it set on dimmer at zero percent if I push down straight away I get um, the dimmer to hundred percent brightness um, which let's meter it with our Sekonic so I'm able to adjust both the um, the dimming and the zoom from a remote control wirelessly. So I can be down there um, with my DP or with the camera and like dial in the exposure that I want. For the um, zoom that we have, we're over 50,000 lux um, at 5,700 uh, Kelvin. So what this is gonna let us do is have a nice hard circle and we, it comes with these barn doors that let us um, cut the light um, with a lot of control. You only have a single chip in the light, which means that there's no dual images, there's no mixed shadows. You have a nice, clean, Fresnel, tight, hard light source. A really great feature of the Light Cannon Pro range, which come in um, daylight, 
by color or RGB is that they're remote controllable. So you can have the light on the end of a C stand or what right up rigged up into the ceiling and you can adjust both the brightness, the color and the um, spot focus. Now we use the light and the barn doors, uh, which are great for shaping the light when we saw um, the Steve Jobs character from behind. But when we came around to get a close up on him, the very hard light um, was a little unflattering. So what we did was add the um, optional softbox. This turns the light into a huge, soft, beautiful source. And with the included egg crate, you can actually control the spill really well, keep it off the background and isolate your character from what's behind him. We were able to shoot this entire scene um, in just a couple of hours with just a couple of locations. We used the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, uh, which gave us a lot of latitude in post to change exposure. Um, and the lights that we used gave us plenty of um, depth and were able to really shape and sculpt and control uh, the light in a way that's an absolute lifesaver on set. This, this guy Kawasaki in Macworld, he accidentally got it right, didn't he? You've been dragging your feet on the new OS just so you can figure out what Apple's gonna need. Even if that's true, it doesn't sound that diabolical to me. I'm your closest confidant, your best friend, your, your thing, your, what do you call it? Work wife, this whole time, the last three years. When did you change your mind and start building this Steve Jobs revenge machine? Do you remember Skylab? It was an unmanned satellite that NASA launched in the early 70s on a data gathering mission. Thing is, when they sent it up, they didn't know how they were gonna get it back. They figured, eight years it was up there, they'd figure it all out. They didn't. So after eight years, it came crashing down across the Indian Ocean. A little to the left, a little to the right. And somebody could have got hurt. I really wanted to build a computer for colleges. The technology just didn't catch up fast enough. And you know we're out of money. But Apple stopped innovating and I saw something better. Joanna, I know a college is not gonna pay $13,000 for a dictionary with good speakers. You know I know that. But Apple will. Navi Tavanian will build them the OS that they need. They're gonna have to buy me too. For half a billion dollars in stock and end-to-end -end control of all products. That is our breakdown of Danny Boyle's Steve Jobs scene. We did this video in collaboration with Max Yuryev, and I will leave a link to their videos in the description below. They will go into more depth of different aspects of the recreation, so definitely check out their videos as well. Thank you very much for watching. Um, check out the lights in the links below and subscribe for more videos like this. There's more info on these units on IntelliTech's website, um, which is available in the link below. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.